order to pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so the gist is we're moving everybody. Vicki probably already knew that somehow. <laughs> Anybody who wants to sign in or get a copy of the agenda, Mr. Moody is sitting there on the bookcase. If you came over here and didn't stop over at the other building. Okay, so I guess we're going to call our meeting back in order. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're going um, to look at our consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the regular board meeting from May 14th. I'll second. Discussion? For the question? No, I got a couple. Just one. No, we're on we're on oh, the, the uh, board meeting. The minutes of May 14th. Okay. Do that. All right, that's all right. All right, so uh call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Um, make a motion to approve the minutes from the special board meeting from May 30th. Second. Discussion? Well, the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the special board meeting from June 4th. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so let's go into our warrants. I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. All right, so, um, oh, let me get a second. Okay, so um, let's go around the table. Uh, Ms. Reynolds, we'll start with you. Um, should we go start with our student activity account? Um, I think for starters, since it's obviously my first board meeting here as far as proven warrants, so. Going through these, I, I do, my main question here prior to, I have a, a few questions in the student activity account itself, but my main question is, what, I want the explanation, explain to me exactly what our student activity account is for. Is it, am I correct in saying it's a student activity account for student fundraising only? Is that what it's established for? No, it's not just for that, no. So, I, my only reason I asked that because I looked, I checked under Montana code annotated because this, this question has been brought before. So now that I'm in the table here approving these warrants, I want to know that is this correct or not. So according to, for us to have an uh, extracurricular fund, they call it pupil functions, Montana code annotated 29-504, says the government of the pupils of school within the district or the administration of a school on behalf of the pupils may establish an extra, extracurricular fund for the purposes of the res receipts and expenditures of money collected for, for pupil extracurricular functions with approval from the trustees. So if I'm reading that right, it's saying they're allowed, we're allowed to have the student activity fund and have it, but it's for fundraising money. That's, that's a check. I cannot read that any differently. So correct me if I'm wrong on that. I would have to review the, the water for I just, well, I mean, okay. I mean, that's all I'm saying is because what I'm looking through our student activity accounts. You know, I had, you know, I, I, you know, I got a few questions as to why we'd have driver's education in there, why we'd have the Florence Cross Parent Teacher Fund in there, why do we have our lunch in there, why do we have in and out account, not sufficient funds, parking. These are none of these are fundraising. These aren't children's moments. So I'm approving. Checks that, it, and if I'm correct in saying this, these checks have already been written. The dates on these are five one to five thirty for June. So, 
these checks, it's telling me under code after that they have to be approved by a trustee or district. So therefore, I'm approving the checks that are in an account that I'm reading it, it doesn't make sense to me that they're there. Also, they've been written prior to me saying I'm supposed to approve them. So that, that's my question on the activity account. And the funds, the actual checks that we're approving from May. So everything against the code, it, it seems to me I'm doing everything wrong there. So I just not very comfortable with that. I just bring that to everybody's attention. And I know it's been, I've been sitting in the seats for years listening. So as much homework as I could on it. And that's what I come up with. So I think we need to take a hard look at our activity fund because it's, it seems to me like we've got money and it's not that the law doesn't want to have. And, Proving these monthly. They've been doing that since I, I, went I understand that. I understand yes. that. But the money, at, that, I'm, I'm the all, money we control here that we approve is district money. Okay. The money right. that, that comes out to pay expenses of the district is out of our general fund. It's okay. out of that money. Right. The extracurricular money, that's the student related stuff. I totally agree with you. That's and exactly that's, what I said. They yes. have the account down at the bank. Mm -hmm. It has to be signed by certain people. They have to do paperwork to request the check. Uh, it's all everything record. you're saying is correct, Dorothy. I'm not arguing that. I'm asking but why we have not Trustees have never touched it. But why do we have? It's if it's if it's children's money from fundraising. Why is our lunch money in there? That's that's money that's pro given to you. That's federal day money. day-to-day -day money that comes in and goes out can't be done through the district office. We have to do it once a month at the board meeting. But we also have to have a way of when kids come in to pay for their driver's uh, ed money, they have to pay it and, and, be, and have a receipt for it. We can't do that at the district office. Okay. We don't I, have, I understand that, but code, yeah. Montana Code Ante says we have to. So that's well, all I'm saying. I, I, that's the auditors all I'm saying. have never, never said anything about that. The auditors review our budget and the extracurricular accounts and they review the minutes of our meetings. They do a compliance check to make sure that everything that we are doing uh, falls into compliance with state law. Okay. And both guy and each year um, we have been told that the way we are conducting this business is correct. Okay. Well, now I have that code, and you said you'd look into it, so I brought that for all board members. So all I'm saying is here it is. So what I've looked into it. Please review it because um, as a new board member and trying to do my job here and. You know, represent the taxpayers and do what's right. I don't feel that I'm doing it, so I just need a little more convincing by just saying that that's the way we've done it, and that our auditors say it's right because the way I understand it, I'm supposed to live and die by Montana Code Anta as a school board member, and if that's the case. And kind of going. We, uh, we can have uh, Mrs. Culver come and give you a discussion on that if you'd like. Mm -hmm. I, that's fine. I don't. That's. I'm asking you guys to look into it and explain to me what, what, what's being written now. That's all I have. I would be happy to okay. uh, take a look into this so that we can explain the procedures and operations of our finances. Okay. Okay. That's def I'm definitely going to need that, obviously. So that's fine. So that's why I was out on board. So I appreciate your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Good questions. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a question. Okay. How about you, Dorothy? Bill, do you uh, have any I see a lot of money for cement. Was that to cure up uh, any excavation for the gas? Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we had uh, some issues there where um, down out on the playground we had some cement board that covered up the sidewalk that had been broken up for that repair line, the boiler, those types of things. Mm -hmm. Was the ten thousand for Downey was that our was that our actual audit? Yeah, that's our audit. So do we, do we have copies of that? Is that given to me? Uh, yeah, you'll get a copy of that when it comes to present. Okay. Somebody might I don't know, Cole, here's something. And somebody might even clarify this for me. To expedite business at its meeting, the board approves the use of a consent agenda, which includes those items considered to be routine in nature. Any item that appears on the consent agenda may be removed by a member of the board. <clears throat> Does that mean that we could take one of these checks that's been approved and back it out of there? Correct. Or that we're going to approve. So if these checks are written, so you're saying that if, if I go through here and I see we 
we don't approve 10 checks or other activity account with procedure if they've already been sent out they haven't been sent out because the checks are here tonight. He's talking about so the district. I'm, talk, oh, I'm, I'm talking oh, about the activity and yeah, yeah, back to it. That is, I would have to look into the procedure for that. So it's never happened? No, not happened that. Okay. Okay, any well, other? It was muddy the water a little more. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Now. Any other uh, any other uh, discussion on the warrants? Okay. So yes. John, I think you made an error in the audit for five Kevin, consecutive I'm sorry, years. We didn't bring the podium, but can you come up and Kevin O'Brien? Thank you. you. Can't hear me. My name Kevin O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Five consecutive years. One with uh, four with uh, Danny and Down Downey, who's the current auditor. And prior, prior to that, it was Fultz out of Missoula. Five consecutive years, the student activity count was not reconciled properly by the auditor. They could not properly account for cash. And each year, in those five consecutive years, and I don't know about 12 and 13, there were 11 items that they recommended the district to fix for five consecutive years, maybe two or three got fixed. So when you told Mr. Reynolds that everything turned out okay in those audits for that account, that's an error. All right, call for the question. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. All opposed? Okay. All right. So. Um, we want to set our special board meeting, and the date that we've been looking at is June 26th. Is that still going to work for everybody? Is that a Wednesday? I think that's a Wednesday, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes, it is. yeah. mm -hmm. What's the double agenda for the? What's the, the mm -hmm. It's our it's our board work meeting that we do once a year. Um, it's where we take a walk through the school. We handle business. We talk about board goals. We talk, you know. We usually start at four o'clock in the afternoon, and it may be eight or nine o'clock at night before oh, that's we're done. A long one. Okay. Yeah, that's really okay. Yeah. So, um, is four o'clock still the time that works for everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a weekday. That's Wednesday, and that would be four p.m. And um, what we want to set up for here? Uh, or do we, oh yeah. So let's plan on just announcing that the meeting will be here in the library. the meeting that when we come back and have the regular meeting after the work stuff is that the one where we handle the last of the june stuff mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. stuff that has to be done before june 30th <laughs> you need in on this we'll have a walk through first and then come back and have a regular board yeah. meeting after well, all the right. yeah usually yeah sometimes we take it sometimes we kind of take it in between yeah we start the meeting and start to work and then we get up and walk around in the middle of it sort of usually all right Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm in. okay, so now we're going to come to that part of the meeting um, where we have public <laughs> comment. Um, with public comment, uh, please remember that uh, public comment is for non agenda items. If you wanted to talk about something that's on the agenda later, we ask you to wait for the discussion portion of that motion or that item. Um, no um, discussion of personnel issues or student issues uh, at this time. Um, and everyone has to proceed in a civil tone. I need you to stand up and say who you are and be sure that everybody can hear you since we didn't bring the podium to over tonight. So um, is there any public comment at this time? Mr. Paris. Yes, um, I have some letters for the board. Can I bring this up? Because I bring it up after. Well, uh, bring them up to the table. That'd be fine. <coughs> for four members of the board. I hope everybody can hear me. This is directed to Mr. Finley, Vice Chair, Ms. Cornish, Ms. Rhodes, and to uh, Colby Reynolds. On May 29, 2013, I wrote a letter to the school asking for agenda items to be put on the agenda. 
unfortunately wrote 613 instead of 611, but it was refused because Mr. McGee, in an email to me, said that after speaking to the board chair, Pat Appleby, it was determined that the placement on the school board agenda would be denied. Mr. McGee also cited school board policy 1420. Which the email to me said that after speaking to the board chair, Pat Appleby, it was determined that the placement on the school board agenda would be denied. Mr. McGee also cited school board policy 1420, which states that the superintendent will prepare the agenda. Mr. McGee cited that I didn't follow the correct complaint process. Now I say, the complaint that I had was against Mr. McGee, the superintendent, and Pat Appleby. On May 28th, I attended a financial budget meeting, which was posted just like this meeting. It's no different. I was denied my First Amendment rights as well as Montana Code Annotated 7-1-4142. This is just one of the codes they broke over and over again by their illegal tact of denial of speech and bullying of a dissenting opinion of a person whom you don't like. A public meeting affords the opportunity of the community to participate verbally, whether you like them or not. Plus, how do you know what the person was going to add? I will state for the record again, in my opinion, their, con their constant attempt at bullying and stifling the public from speaking at meetings, which is open to the public, is both illegal and immoral. Since you four trustees are Mr. McGee's supervisor, I am notifying you this of writing. I'm asking this from you four. Call a special, special meeting, which I will be happy to supply a videotape of this incident along with other people to whom this has been done to as well, to address these illegal actions by both Mr. McGee, Mr. McGee and, Ms. and Ms. Appleby. At this meeting, discuss Mr. McGee's actions. At this meeting, discuss Ms. Pat Appleby's actions. At this board meeting, I think the board should distance itself from Ms. Appleby's actions on the night of 528-13. Ms. Appleby is to recuse herself from any formal discipline in regards to Mr. McGee's actions on that night. I have not handed this over to an attorney yet, and I expect to hear from one of the four. Thank you very much. Any other public comments? Yeah, way to go, John McGee. You're doing a great job. That's all I got to say. And who are you? I'm Robin Christopher. Oh, I didn't see you. Can I, you can stand up so I can see you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, let's go on to our facilities. Um, oh, I'm sorry, one more person. Oh. Hi, my name is Julie Logan, and I've never been to one of these meetings before. I actually live out of uh, district and have to get my daughter into this school. And I'm just barely, vaguely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you've got to talk. You're supposed to talk Oh, I'm sorry, i talk to you. Okay. I'm vaguely familiar with with what going on here but I just wish people could if you could encourage yourself to be tolerant forgiving and you know just these people are here to work for us and make a good school you don't need to have an ego and be worried about freedom of speech I think they're ready to give us freedom of speech I mean I'm nobody but I just think it's kind of silly Okay, anybody else? All right, so now we're going to move to our out of district student applications. Okay, we have on the agenda the new non resident student applications, and when you when you board pack, you were presented a list of students who've applied. We have the applications here for you to review if you'd like to. At this time, we have conducted a review of each of these applications and find that each of them are students in good standing um, and the recommendation to the board is to approve each one of these applications as presented. And so if we do call each individual uh, member up and determine whether or not they would like to discuss their application with the board, if you have questions regarding uh, their application, I'd like to review it, 
Um, you may do so, but they do have the right to go into an executive session if they so choose, because the rights of privacy of their child supersedes the public's right to that. So first, uh, new uh, non-residents in application is Cole Conley. Mm -hmm. Is Cole, is Cole's parents here? Did you say Cowan? Cowan, Cowan? yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, would you like to move into executive session? I guess I'm not sure exactly. That means that everybody clears the room except you and your child and any anything like that? Okay. Did you have any questions of us? Anything that... Okay, and what grade will your son be going to? Sixth. Sixth grade? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let, this might be a good time before we go all the way down the list to give our little spiel about um, having an out-of-district students. Um, we have a lot of out-of-district students. That's uh, The policy is that if having out-of-district students does not require us hiring an extra aide or an extra teacher or uh, having an extra classroom, uh, we are usually, ex and the student is in good standing, no discipline problems, good grades, all of that. It's usually straightforward for you to be a student at our school. Um, I will tell you though that if you get into trouble, you don't just get the principal doing whatever needs to be done. You a lot of times end up in front of the board and we have the option to say, we're sorry, can't come here anymore. So unfortunately, or fortunately as the case may be, you get to be uh, held to a little bit higher standard uh, because you're from out of district. So um, as long as everybody's all good with that, um, and you have to reapply every year to the office. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And again, we'd, we would evaluate each year whether having the out of district student placement would then cause us a teacher problem or an aid problem or anything like that. Did I miss anything, Becky? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're all good, okay, mm -hmm. let's go on to, is it Jevin Davis? Okay. Did you need to move into executive session? No. Okay. Uh, any questions? No. What grade would your child be in? I have two. One will be in 10th grade and one will be 7th grade. 10th and 7th? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. How about um, Jose Diaz? Okay. And did you guys need to move into? No. No? We're all good. Any questions? No, no, those of you that knew uh, Miguel Lara, this is his younger brother. Okay, uh, that was there very good. Last year. And, okay. Uh, very and charismatic young man, and he'll be a senior this year. Senior? Okay. All right, how about Randall Feld? Is it Feldy? Feldy. I'm Feldy. His grandmother. Okay. Diane. Diane? Um, He'd be a second grader. Second grader? All I'll right. Be living do, with us. do you uh, want to have executive no, session for I discussion? Went last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough. How about Jacob Grayson's family? You're back there. Hello. Did you want to have executive session for any reason? No. Any questions for us? No. What grade? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. All right. Uh, Odin. Hey, Dick. Hey, Dick. Hey, Dick. Um, what grade? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. All right. And any questions or executive session they did? No. Okay. Don't feel like I'm trying to hustle. If you really want to say executive session, speak up, okay? Um, Ethan Yeager, parents here? Um, no? Okay. So we're going to put that one aside. Uh, Emma Keller, hello? No. Uh, any questions? No. What grade? Tenth, or ninth, sorry. Ninth, okay. Um, Ivan Martino? Right here. Okay. This is Yvonne. Yvonne, and I'm sorry. Debbie Ashmore, where his host family is from Spain. Okay. And 4.0 student, wonderful kid. I think he'd be a great. Love it. What grade did you say? Senior. Senior. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, Emma Mickelson? Back there? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hi. What grade? First grade. Okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Uh, Kendall Plant? Yeah, right here. Okay, hello. Hi. What grade? I should be kindergarten. Kindergarten. Any questions? No, we're good. Okay. Um, Elizabeth Rafferty? Hello? Any questions? No, I have five actually. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 what grades will that be? Three ninth graders. Um, 
fourth and the third. The fourth and what was the last one? <coughs> okay. All right. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't read all the way down. So thank you for going there. Um, all right. So Cameron Weber. Yep. Hello. Yep. Any questions? No, we're good. What grade? Uh, ninth. Ninth. Okay. And um, Canyon Williams. Hello. Hi. Any questions? What grade? Third. Third. Okay. Okay. So okay. Mr. McGee is well, recommending. The recommendation is to um, admit each of these students. Based we on can't their hear records. you back here. Uh, the recommendation is to admit each of these students based on their records. They are in good standing and uh, we believe would be good additions to the school district. Uh, we do want, as the administration, to let these parents know that we strongly believe that out of district students' attendance in our district is a privilege and not a right. And the educational right of your children do exist in your home districts. Therefore, if there are problems or issues that arise, we do expect you to go above and beyond to come in and work with the school to, you know, alleviate the concerns that we may have. Otherwise, we are more than willing to bring you to the board and invite you to go back to your own district. Um, we have had to do that in the past, but for the most part, we have had very good experience here and have not had uh, many problems with out-of-district students. And I see this group of students that are asking to come in to be as good quality as we need to let in in the past. So since I read, since I already read everybody's name, can we approve the No, we're gonna we're gonna exclude him. I'll also move the. Um, we have discussion first. I just have. We have a motion. Okay, got it. Motion and second first. Yeah. Yeah. Also move that the applicants, except for Ethan Jinder, because we didn't have a parents are not here. Are here. Um, accepted for the 2013-14 school year. Second. Okay, so now discussion. Uh, just a couple quick questions on kind of looking at the taxpayer side of this. What what's it cost? What's the cost to educate a high school student here at Florence and a uh, uh, elementary school? What's the school's cost? We receive A and B dollars for these students that right. are in. I understand. That's A and B money from OPI. Correct. So we receive this number. I checked into that. So elementary received 5075 and high school we received 6500 That was the OPI website. Correct. So that's what we receive. Um, what's, uh, so what does it actually cost us to educate them? Would you, the accurate way to figure that, take our total budget? Divide it by the number of students and come up with that figure. That's one way to, to compute it if you like. Um, there are other ways you can look at it. Do you also. have any idea what what that cost is per student? I don't have it off the top of my head. Did you, did you come up with a number? Well, if you take our total budget, which is what does that? What's our? I know our total. Our budget is five point two nine eight. What's our? What's our federal funding? Funding. I don't have that number off the top of my head. No, no, but I can't. Happen to. Well, we it was in those reports that we had at the budget meeting. Uh, which I don't think the federal funding was in it. I don't think that funding stream was in it, wasn't it? I'd be more than happy. Do you to remember? Get those for you. Yeah. No, it I wasn't. I looked. Yeah, it was general fund budget. Mm -hmm. It was state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean that that's what that. Don't get me wrong. I I'm a parent. I. I'm going with you guys. It's nothing to do with that. I'm simply just simply wanting to know what our, you know, we're bringing, we're at 80 district, out of district with this addition here. And if we're receiving, you know, all I'm saying is Missoula County charges 1300 tuition per school. I know it's all been brought up again. That's obviously got to cover for whatever compensation they need to educate. My only question was, as you know, I'm voting on these guys, how much is it costing us? I mean, that's a realistic figure to ask for when you're asking me to bring in if for the taxpayers, you know, they, you know, if it's costing us seven thousand dollars per elementary kid, and that that that's what if, if that's the case, then that, that I'm, I'm over. How does well, that work? And the reality of it is that really the there's already the teacher, there's already the room, we've already got the building, we've already got all of these things set in place. These students that are coming in, if they were not accepted. We would be we would be without that 
Right, I, I understand that, but all I'm asking is what's it cost? It's hard It's hard for me to well, vote on something I don't know too well, 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 The state base, well, that's what they, they say. The state yeah. figures it off of a, a per kid. Remember that's they, how much they, money they we get is based off of our general state. budget goes to salaries. Right. So, so yeah. all I'm saying, all right, so the math I did, you know, just to, that without the proper information showed that it cost us more than what we received. I'm not going to throw numbers out because I don't have them. But with what the, with well, the, the formula you I, gave me and then what I'm showing, I, they, that's I, I, what I came I up with. I want to make a suggestion to or a suggestion to you that it maybe is appropriate or not. But some of these questions that you're bringing to the table now that are making it hard for you to to um, feel like you're voting knowledgeably mm -hmm. should probably be once you get your budget packet so, or your packet probably should be directed to the district office before this meeting so that we can have a chance to have those answers for you. Okay. Well, I just thought it was one simple and ask question yeah. of that. I mean, most of us don't file that kind of stuff. I don't file that kind of stuff in my head. I don't have a, I don't have that capacity. I don't okay. even know my kid's phone number, so I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> well, obviously I do, I, I do business differently. That's mm -hmm. also, I'm just, I'm here to, you know, but it's numbers. I, I, I mean, I can't, I, it's hard for me to make decisions so, without numbers. So that's well, all I'm saying, but I'm done. Is a different world. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I'm learning quickly. So trust me. Can I, say I know. I'm sure. Since I've been on the board, since Mr. McGee has been here, we have always had end of the year money, meaning that there was money left over out of the general fund that we were able to do things like carpet rooms, address roof issues. I mean, buy Promethean boards, those kinds of things. So, and we have in the last several years been accepting out of district students had that been a financial burden on the district i think it would have shown up there with us not being able to have the you know well, we did ask for mail everything didn't we well that's that's true okay. but um but we've also always been able to use that extra money at the end of the year to um Okay. Well, I don't want to leave everybody here. They got plenty to do. That, that's my question. But I think, I think Pat's suggestion, Colby, yeah. is a very good one. Uh, and those are these are valid questions that could be addressed. Mr. So. McGee could, you know, could answer a lot of these things before before a board meeting. Thank you. All right. So uh, we finished the discussion, and we're going to call for the question. And the motion is to accept these uh, kids for out of district for the coming school year. Except for except for um, Ethan, um, then they can reapply and be here at another meeting. Uh, so all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Um, we are, you, those of you who are here for just this portion, you're welcome to leave if you like. We'd love to have you stay and observe the rest of the meeting, but you certainly can leave if you'd like to. And thank you for coming. So, hello, people who are here with existing sit tight, we're coming to you next, okay? So, we just handled the new applications. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go on then to uh, existing non-resident student applications. Mr. McGee. Okay, there is a list in the board packet of existing uh, non-resident student applications. We have in this binder here all of their applications that we keep on file. Um, most of these students have done a very nice job with us. There are a couple of exceptions that I would need for the board to understand. Um, Keaton Jager is a student whose parents have been invited to be here tonight to talk with regard to his uh, out of district student application. And uh, there's also the El Elkington girls, uh, Maria and uh, Julia. Julia, that I believe their dad is here tonight. Correct? Uh, another, and in that case, I would recommend we go into an executive session to discuss that matter. But the rest of the applications, uh, we're looking to have approved as presented. Well, so many of them. Do we need to be allowed? Yes, we should have. Oh, okay. 
So who again, are, who, I'm sorry, who again do we need to? These three right here. Okay, I'm going to go. And, okay. All right, Vicki Beer, if you would read. Mitchell Elbers. Right here. And that's Ava also. Yep. Moira Anthem. Now, all means they don't have to be existing. They, they've been told they don't have to be. Okay, okay. Week. So I don't, then, do I need to read through these? Yeah. It has to go in the minutes. Okay, okay. Does it? it has to go in the record. All right, okay, here we go. Sorry. Okay. Ethan Olivia and Sarah Burrard, Colin Chambers, Hannah Cowan, Tyler Dara, Bryce and Bailey DeWitt, <laughs> Mitchell Edgar, Paul, and what is that? Is he, is he with the other? Yeah, oh, Paul and Angela are fine. Paul and Angela, okay, Paul and Angela Eklinton, Elkington, Elkington, okay, Roland Fisher, Aaron Gilbert, I forgot my Michael Oh, Michael Elkington, mm -hmm. see how you shouldn't have any names, Michael <laughs> Elkington, okay, we're back to Aaron Gilbert, Garrett Griffin, Holly mm -hmm. Hale, Tyson Hawkinson, Keenan Hendrickson, Jaden Hendrickson, Jarrett Henry, Colin Jelinski, Sarah and Emily Juden, Coleman Caitlin, Jacob Kelling, Amelia Keefe, Savannah Kostecki, <coughs> Sydney Kostecki, Kaylin Lawson, Tori Lawson, Bridget Lucas, Austin Meinzen, Aiden Meinzen, Avery Meinzen, Craig Mertens, Annalise Malagio, Gianna Malagio, Noel Malagio, did I say that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I have it too. <laughs> okay, um, Armani Morales, Jace Pancake, Caden Plasmer, Emily Roberts, Shantel Robbins, um, Allison Russ, Riley Russ, Brendan Schneider, Claire, Elise Schneider, Hunter Stewart, Megan St. Germain, Alex Talby, Sean Tree, Brett Bulkman, Gavin Weber, Braden Win Winston. We're going to second that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy. All right, so any discussion there? Any parents in that group need to say anything? Okay. So call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And you all may stay or go as you choose. And then we will <laughs> ask, um, I guess, Elton, 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 All right, so I guess we're going to go with the uh, up to up in the uh, family. And do um, you think we should go to executive session? Is that, would you like to have that? I accept it to recommend that. Okay. Um, I think that, I, that it protects the privacy of your children, so it's probably for the best that we do that. Okay. Okay? So that means everybody else has to go stand out in the hall. Uh, and then as soon as we're done, we'll let you know. Are those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All right, thank you everybody for hanging in. And if you want to continue to stay, you may or you may. We have yeah. uh, his, his application. Okay. His recommendation is to deny his application. All right, so do you want to handle that at okay. this point? Yeah, I'm going to handle it as long as we can discuss it. So, do you have any motion for that? Yeah. Move that we deny T.E. Jagger's of this the of the Canada State Protection Court in Australia. I have Keaton on the regular list. Oh, okay. Keaton has the other one. Oh, okay. So, further discussion? Say why we wrap with based off of uh, based off of the fact that there would be additional uh, resources that the school district would have to um, hire on in order to maintain his attendance. We would have to hire on special education. <coughs> All right, and since the parents aren't here, um, we would afford them an opportunity to come and talk to us later. Here, okay, so. All right, so um, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, so we're on to uh, facility. Okay. Lower elementary work replacement. For the last few years, we've been talking about the need to um, do some major repairs to the elementary work. Um, it, it leaks like a sieve, just to, to put it short. And we have we've discussed the fact that the metal roofing is all pitted out up there, and that we've gone in and we've done patch job after patch job, that the patches seem to, to last about nine months to a year, and then we're back to uh, mysterious water patterns showing up in our elementary building. And so the fact of the matter is, is that we are at a point in the school year where we may have end of year monies that might afford us the opportunity to fix that problem. And in previous years, we've talked about it being a higher priority need for us to address for the school's facility. Uh, failure, failure to address that problem is going to lend to bigger issues with the facility in the long run. Um, we currently are monitoring it very closely for mold to make sure that we don't have mold occurring um, but there's no guarantees there when you, when you do have a leak and you do have moisture getting into your building it can create that issue another issue is that it could compromise the structural integrity of the building uh, by rusting out uh, parts of the building that um, you know just aren't designed to handle the moisture so one of the things that i have ask the board to consider tonight is that uh, we have bid uh, specs that have been created for the replacement of that roof and to advertise it and have it where by the end of the month we could have contractor bids come in that would give us an opportunity to see who is able to do the job and what the job might cost even if we receive the bids if we do not have the money then we would just uh, table that action until we are, are able to afford uh, the opportunity. But if we do have end of year monies available, then it might be a, an opportunity for this board to say, okay, let's get this problem taken care of. So tonight, what I am asking the board to do is to go ahead and approve uh, the terms and conditions of the bid so that um, contractors may uh, bid on the specs for this job. And please be aware that. The roofing material you're asking for is the same material that we have on other parts of our facility that we have re roofed recently. Um, as you recall, a couple of years ago, we re roofed the area above the library here and on back over the map in the computer lab areas by uh, Mr. Edgar and Mr. Stewart's room. Last year, we re roofed um, with the same material down around by the middle school wing with Karen Pettit on down around by um, Mrs. Um, Hackathorn's room. So what we're looking at is a membrane roof where uh, the current metal would be left in place and there would be some 
uh, fiber that would be put up there to fill the trenches and that fiber board would create a decking system where the membrane roof would be attached and put in and then the rain gutters that would go along with it. Also move. All right, discussion. Uh, will you receive, so you're saying there's spec, you won't uh, accept any alternate type of material? If someone, another bid comes in? Is that what you're saying? What type of material? I don't know, I mean, you're saying you're, you're specifying the same type that we've had on there. If we get a quote from another guy with some other product, will we, we accept that if it shows good performance? If it has the same, you know, like we're, we have, uh, 60 mil TPO. Right, so as long as it's approved, if, as long as it's based off your spec that you're giving me right here, you'll, right. who do we, where are you going to advertise, who's, where do we put the stuff in? in the Missoulian. It would be in the Missoulian? Correct. Do you ever, do you, is it open to the public? <coughs> why don't you use the plans exchange or something like that? Is that a possibility more people, more contractors look at? Well, we are required to advertise it in a medium that we believe goes to most of our taxpayers and the Missoula is that. Missoula. And so that's where we have put it. So you'll open it up to you in the Missoula for open bid then? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Uh, could we somehow put, it, put something in there and so we could do it? Do the job no matter if we get, have any of your monies? Or, it sounds almost emergency. Well, the thing is, we didn't have the money, so we'd probably try to patch it again. The problem with the patch job is for every thousand dollars we put up there, it doesn't seem to last very long, mm -hmm. and we're trying to take a long-term fix to this issue. Sure. Um, my, my worry is that um, it could come in a lot more expensive than we anticipate. I, I'm hopeful that this job can come in somewhere in the range of eighty to a hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. If it if it far exceeds that, then I think we've probably got some issues. When will we know if we have end of the year money? So when will we have that resource? Uh, we're currently running payroll and stuff for this month, and so we should have those numbers shortly. If we will know if we'll have it. Then we'll have it in June. In June. We'll have it. We'll have it. June meeting. That's June twenty-sixth. Yeah. So basically, you know, we're just trying to get people to tell us what they think it might cost. Yeah. Without any big sure. without a commitment. Because there's a time frame. If I'm in my correct yeah, we'd need to award the bid before the end of June in order to use this year's money to complete the project. All right. Any further discussion? Oh, hello. Just a question. Is there any money in emergency fund it sounds from what you're talking about like Mel is just saying I don't know it's pretty bad and to sort of drip and grab it doesn't um, make much sense anymore well we have committed quite a bit of our resources to a septic issue okay. that is a bigger emergency all right so uh, call for the question all those in favor of the motion all right, all right. okay so the gas line leak uh, the school. It's like I said, that we're building a new school from the inside out. And the gas line is another example of what we do. Um, recently we had a an order out on the playground that we could not detect where it was coming from, uh, how it was originating. We thought that there was a smell of gas, then it wouldn't be there. So we, we came to the conclusion that it looked like one of the regulators on the side of the building that for the gas line that does have a vent on it, so, um, and could vent off gas at times, was perhaps causing the issue. We called in Northwest Energy. They came in with uh, a fairly sophisticated s sniffer and tracked the line and found that underground we had a leak somewhere. And they gave us apparently a, a, a radius of where they believed that the leak might exist. Um, we did some excavation on that to determine what was going on and it was determined that the line is leaking in multiple places. So at this point we have shut down the gas line to the high school science lab and 
we need to fix that and we have a contractor coming on site to do those repairs this week. So ACOR is going to come in and cut out the concrete and the house vault and then the contractor will come in and do the repairs to this line and put it in the gas line and for us. And it's just, you know, it's one of those unforeseen things. We were, we were not aware that that was an issue, but it became an issue and we are now having to fix it. So I just wanted to make sure the board was aware of that. Okay, so that's information only. Did, did we get, do we get an estimate on that cost of what that's going to It was an emergency fix and, uh, you know, we do not believe it's going to exceed the $50,000 limit, but it, it's something that had to be taken care of. But, but we have no idea what it's going to cost? We do know that ACOR is going to cost about $3,600 at this point to fix that. Okay, so we are on to um, personnel. Personnel. All right. Yeah, certified staff, fifth grade position. We're going to table this position. Um, we were prepared to bring uh, Kayla Freely forward for recommendation to fill the fifth grade position. However, uh, we were noticed this morning by Kayla that she has accepted a job in Missoula and she tenured her resignation effective um, at the end of this school year, which is today. So, for that reason, uh, the board needs to table that position. So we have to make a motion on that? Um, no. No? Okay. Oh, All right. Well, I want some more. <laughs> <laughs> Vicki, is there going to be discussion on that? Is that, can we just ask if, the, if it's going to be, is fifth grade going to hire another? Teacher, I mean, is that the plan? Would it? What's? We are currently studying it. Uh, we have applications. We're reviewing applicants. Uh, but the budget and finance committee is going to be looking at its budget come the end of this month. Is the board aware that the fourth grade is has 28 and 29 kids? in it right we, now we've received all the letters and info so it's something that the budget committee is looking how can we squeeze that right. into there so it's it's will come up after budget committee makes a recommendation to the board oh so yeah, there so you guys are aware that we yeah, yeah. yeah we all got the letters and the info from everybody so okay. when did we get that we're looking on it <laughs> yeah I, i'm not trying to stir the pot i just wanted to know if that was a decision um no, no decision has been made at this point. We're still looking at it. Yeah. Okay. 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 We're here. Pardon me. I said we're here. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was to handle. This I don't was have to handle the kid in first grade. I'm just telling you. So, yeah, this this position was to have handled Mrs. Weldon's retirement right. spot. So um, that's what this was about. Your thing will come up. Oh, it's not my thing. Yeah, I mean, but I didn't even sign a letter. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. I had a question. I, my kid was in fourth grade, going to fifth. I understand it. her comment. What about the third graders coming to fourth grade? How big are those classes? I don't know. Are they much smaller or bigger? I mean, that's how I was curious. I about. can tell you. Are you guys going to have the numbers? Yeah, I have a yeah, yeah, we, we don't, don't have, have, 20, have to get 26. that back to so you. Same thing. Then. Yeah. Okay, but three teachers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have a basic idea, but. We're, we have we better take that up at a time when we actually know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, talk to Mr. McGee and see what we need to do. You know, to yep. exchange information there, please. If you have questions, I'd be more than yeah. happy to sit down with you and explain where we're at. Because we're looking, we'll look at see who's going to be, you know, who moved up and all that kind of stuff. So it must be a darn good school with all these kids coming here, huh? That'd be my. I agree. So, okay, so um, now we're going to go on to extracurricular staff and we're going to start with annual advisor. Is recommended that Carrie Blaney fill the yearbook advisor position for the 2013-14 school year? Also moved. Second. Discussion? Does it bind your job on any position that there's on? Okay. Uh, call for the question. All those in favor? Um, Aye. We have the uh, band performance contract for Jennifer Kirby as our band director, and it is recommended that we need to approve 
for band performance contract for 1314 school. I'll Discussion? Yeah. 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 So, uh, call for question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. right. Now, the pep band contract for Mrs. Kirby for 1314 School. Call for question. And the eighth graders are going to be a great addition. Oh they were so yeah. good last awesome. night. Awesome. Yeah. They were yes, so good. They were. Yes. I'm thinking the same thing. So call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have Dirk Schmidt with the drama performance contract. He did a very nice job with uh, his programs this year and is recommended that he is headed on again to perform the drama contract. Just a move. Discussion? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so call for question. All those in favor? Uh, All right. Yeah. All right. And then we have the choir performance contract for Mrs. Emily Hackathon. I recommend that she is hired for that performance contract for the 1314 school year. Also moved? Second. She doesn't know. I want to know how they play piano stand. <laughs> that's that's hard to do, and to do it, and watching the kids, but keeping everything together, do an excellent job. So discussion, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Middle school activity director, we would like to table that at this time. And move on to the head track coach position. We have Mariah Patterson, who has been our head track coach for the past couple of years, and. She has been very successful in working with her kids. So we recommend that we need to rehire Mariah Patterson as a head track coach for the 13-14 school year. So Sorry. Discussion? Call for the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We have two assistant coaches that would like to come back and work with her again. That is Brian Newman and Keith Balford. We do have one other coach, assistant coach, that we will need to fill that position. We're going to need to advertise that and get that filled as soon as possible. So the recommendation is for Brian Newman and Keith Balford as assistant track coaches for the 13-14 school year. As we we'll move. Second. Discussion? Call for the question. All those in favor? Um, Aye. Then we have... Do we need to move on to opening that coaching position?